Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, hallelujah, for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. We sense your presence. We know you're here because I brought you, you with me and I can see somebody else brought you with them. And we say thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mercy. Oh God, your mercy. Your kindness. Ooh, your love. Your grace. We thank you. Now you just have your way. Use this instrument any way you see fit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Brother Scott. Praise God. Now I'm going to go right on into this word and ask you if you would turn with me to Psalms 46. Now, I don't think I need to spend a lot of time telling you that change has come into the world. Change has come, people. Change has come. And I'm trying to tell you things will never be the same. Sometimes I, I wish for the, uh, the times before, you know, we could be a little freer in the land. But uh, change has come. Now I can also tell you that it doesn't matter about what happens in this world. If you hooked into, hallelujah. Oh God, Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has done for us. You don't spend your time crying over the changes that are coming. We spend our time in worship and praise, adoration unto him, knowing that we're his children and he has us in the palm of his hand. I read it in the Bible. Come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. Such change has come upon us. Glory to God. Give me about three or four minutes. I want to address just a little bit of the change. Maybe five minutes. But I, I want to say that to all of us Christians, now I'm taking it for granted that we have Christians in the house, all right? Now if there's an unbeliever in here, you in the right place. You're in the right place. Hallelujah. But I speak to us today to say that if you know who you are, if you know who your God is, and if you are, hallelujah, if you have determined in your heart it's all about Jesus, what he has to say, hallelujah, that the word of God, hallelujah, is the ultimate authority in your life, hallelujah, that I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter about change. Doesn't matter about change. All that matters is that we keep our hands in the hand of the man who steals the waters. Hallelujah. And, and, and you know what I love about all of that is that he has us in his hand. My hand might get weak sometimes, but his hand never gets weak, somebody. And we're in the palm of his hands. And about this pandemic, we got two pandemics going on. One is COVID-19 all over the world. I mean, for real. And the other pandemic, it, dealing with racism. Yes, yes, yes. Two pandemics going on at the same time. Yes, yes. All over the world. I'm looking at foreign countries. I've never seen it before in my life. I'm like, they're marching and protesting over the same thing that the United States is marching and protesting over. A lot of us, you know? And I'm like, oh my God, that makes it a pandemic. Well, I want to address that pandemic just for a minute. Regardless of what the pandemics are all about. 
I'm here to tell you today, nothing, and I mean nothing, is gonna separate me from the word of God, and nothing is going to separate me from God's church. From God's church. Now I'm going to talk about the church in this message today. Because see, church folks, church folks need to get an understanding, all of us. And you just remember, before I brought this word, bringing it to you, I had to digest it myself. No, 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 I love people, but I'm too selfish, baby, to bring you a word from God and not first digest it myself. I'm too selfish for that, because I want all that he have to give also. Amen? Amen. Let us not get caught up, church. Let us not get caught up in hatred, not liking one another, can't stand one another because of the color of our skin. Let's not get caught up in that. God is not calling the church to hatred. Our God is love. Who is she talking to? She done come up in here and trying to tell us white folks. I'm telling the white folks and the black folks and the green and the purple people. Are you a part of the church of God? You're a part of the church of God. Then it's time for us to pull together. When I see the world out doing all kinds of things, uh huh. When it goes from peaceful protesting, and there's a cause for the protesting, I'm not gonna waste your time telling you that I was born and raised in Mississippi. I'm not gonna waste your time with it. Thank God I had Christian parents. And regardless of what we saw, my mama and my daddy took us kids, and I'm number 13. They took us kids, they said, but we are Christians. We believe in the Lord. And God told us to love and not hate children. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, if you think I don't thank God for my parents. A lot of parents teaching their children how to hate. So the next generation can come up hating. I thank God that my parents taught me not to hate, to love everybody. I thank God for that. Somebody better hear me because I'm preaching already. I thank God for that. You love everybody. And then Jesus gets badder than that, badder than that. Can I use a little street vernacular here? He gets badder than that. He said, love your enemies. That's book, y'all. I got a reason. I got a reason to hate. No, you don't. Somebody's your enemy, then that means love is in order. Come on, somebody. Love is in order. See, I'm black. I ain't scared to say the word. It's not a bad word. People used to say black in my presence. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what you sorry for. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I don't know what you're sorry about. I'm what God made me, baby. I don't know what you're sorry about. Don't apologize to me. Somebody with me? I'm not going to stay there, but I want to do, do a little preference right there so the church understands we are special. Jesus Christ came into the earth, and well, he laid down a foundation, and he did all the work, and he completed what he started. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so the way have already been made, but he left us here, the church. He left us here to be his extended arms. Come on, somebody. His extended feet. His extended mouth. We are to speak a word. The word of God. And we got to do it in love. Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians 13. I don't care how well you can preach, teach, or sing. Without love, sounding brass, tinkling cymbals. Let's go into this scripture. Glory to God. We love one another. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I want everybody to get that black, white, alike. We're the church. And we have a job to do in the earth. Holy Ghost just brought it back to me. 
whatever the world is doing out there and there's a lot of deception out there and a lot of hatred I'm going to stand in the pulpit and lie about that but whatever the world is doing the church cannot become a part of it the church got to stand for Jesus Christ amen glory to God the subject today is be still I know people like to run that on a little bit but first be still comma and no be still and no that's Psalm 46 uh huh and 10 be still and no now to be still simply says that, that, that and this is a word from God to all of us to be still you got to stop you got to think when God tells his people to be still, he is saying, take a break, rest. In order for us to take a break in this world today and rest in this world, I'm trying to tell you, we need to be trusting in Jesus. <laughs> because your flush and your emotions will cause you to be restless. Woo! But we got to be still because the word told us to be still. We got to hear what God wants to say to us. How are you going to receive instructions from the Lord and you refuse to calm down? All right. Refuse to pray. We got to be still. And the second part of this subject is, and no. And no. And no. It's something we got to know. And sometimes you need to be still in order to know. Because life is moving fast. Yeah. Look like new things are happening every day. Just, just, just blows your mind. Yeah. But we got to be still. Seek our God. And know. What does the rest of that passage say? <laughs> be still and know that I am God. Yes. That I am God. Once we be still... And remember and know that God is God. And that means that he is in control of everything. Be still and know. See, when you get still and know and put your trust in him, and then you can't rest in him, you got to trust him in order to rest. Somebody got that? Glory to God. And when you go there, my God, you ready to receive instructions from the Lord. We need instructions from the Lord. Even to go from day to day, you need instructions from the Lord. Because if you don't go there, something will happen, and you'll see something on that TV, or it might happen right in your community. But it's like get the wall closed on. See what I'm saying? We got to stand still and we got to know that God is God. Amen? Amen? And then the rest of that says, I love it. I will exalt, I will be exalted among the nations. Better grab that. God said that he will, he didn't say might. He said, I will be exalted among the nations. That's the whole world, y'all. And if you don't get it that time, listen at the next statement. Confirm it. I will be exalted in the earth. Now that's God speaking right there. You can take it to the bank. Glory to God. We want to learn how to be still. Hallelujah. Isaiah 2. All right. Isaiah 2. Verses 11 and 12. Give me a few minutes. I'm watching the clock for you. Mm -hmm. The lofty looks of man shall, not my, shall be humbled. Lofty. 
lofty, that proud look, that look of superiority. Uh huh. The Bible said that lofty look, not might, but shall be humbled. Now see, when you get to standing up on this word right here, what you gonna worry about? Our God has it in his hands. Yeah. See, that's what happened when we put too much trust in the government. And then the government itself come out with doing something or saying something and now we all messed up again. Why don't you put your trust in the one who, that never messes up, that means everything he says. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a remedy for that. See, see? And the lofty looks of man shall be humble. The haughtiness, more pride, more pride, of men shall be bowed down. God is speaking. And he said, I'm going to bring it down. Yes. I can tell you right now, he's talking to everybody. Before we sit here and decide in our minds who God talking to, and he's talking to everybody but me. Before you go there, you better realize he's speaking to everybody. Yes, he's the creator of everybody. Yes. And he's speaking to all of us. Yes. Hallelujah. Then he says again here, <laughs> and the Lord alone, I like that alone, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Glory. Nobody but God. We got to get that straight right there. Nobody but God is going to be exalted in that day. And he's talking about the day of the Lord. See, it looks like, you know, people are getting away with stuff. You see things happening, it just looks like, oh, Lord, people are getting away with evil. And evil is just prevalent. I got news for you. I got news for you. God is going to take care of everything. So stop building up all of this hatred in your heart. Don't let the devil get away with it. You say no to the devil. My God is love and I'm going to love in spite of. And I'm going to tell you something. I hear the Lord. I was praying and I was stretched out praying. Oh, I was asking God to show me the way. To teach me what he wanted me to know. And lead and guide. Oh, I was stressed out, buddy. I was stressed out. I had a little prayer room in the bottom area of the church at that time. And I was stressed out. This is some years ago. Uh-huh. And, and I was so sincere. I was crying and weeping. I was talking to the Lord. I meant that I was selling out and giving him my all. God spoke to me as plain as day. What do you want me to do? He said, love your enemy. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. See, that's the way God is. See, God knows exactly what to nail on. <laughs> you can think you got rights. No, you don't have a right to hate anybody. Hold on about Sunday. You don't have a right. And I started practicing how to love my enemy. People that had treated me wrong, and I mean they had wrongly uh, came against me, and I knew it was wrong, because it was wrong according to the word of God. And I set out and practiced how to love them in spite of. I set out to do it, because God spoke to my heart specifically and said, love your enemies. Amen. Somebody with me? Yeah. You cannot obey God and go wrong. All right. And so, and so he says here in verse 12, for the day of the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall come upon every proud and lofty, <laughs> upon every lifted up, everything that's lifted up. That's what he says. And it shall be brought, what? Low. Oh All pride is going to be brought low. Oh if you don't believe those words, you better talk to Satan. I read and studied up on Satan and what the way God created him. He was the most beautiful and most powerful being. But that lofty spirit, that spirit of pride and haughtiness uh -huh, happened right in heaven because the angels were created with free will beings. 
as free will beings. They were. And so Satan got lifted up, and what happened? He got not only kicked out of heaven, he is doomed throughout eternity, folks. Now, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I truly don't have time. Eternity is too long. Somebody with me? Amen. If this Bible said, come off of that haughty look, that loftiness, that feeling superior over somebody, if God said, come off of it, I'm off of it. Yes. I don't have time for it because this word is not playing with any of us. Right. Glory yes. to God. Amen. Don't feel like you've got an excuse and a reason. Come off of it and do it God's way. Somebody hear me? Yes. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I'm moving fast. And I'm moving on through here. I'm not going to hold you all day. Move to Proverbs 16. Grab these things. Hallelujah. Yes. Proverbs 16, verse 5. And it says, Everyone proud in his heart is an abomination to the Lord. Right. Now I'm preaching against pride uh -huh. in the church. Don't go point your finger at the sinners to me. Look at, look how they act. Look what they're doing. I expect that. I know who their daddy is. I know who their daddy is. They acting just like their daddy. That's what Jesus told them Pharisees, didn't he? You acting like your father and I'm acting like mine. Don't go pointing the finger at the world. That's where I must come in right now and tell you it's about what's going on in the church. Don't point the finger at the world. Because the world is always going to be here and there's going to be negative, evil people, haters. Even when Jesus comes, even when he comes, and I'm not talking about the rapture either. I'm talking about when he, the second coming when he put his foot down yeah. on that Mount Olivet. Yeah. And the Bible said that that foot laying down on Mount Olivet, that mountain going to split. I'm talking about the real mountain in Israel. Even then when God put down and come down and do that work, and I don't have time to go there. That's a, that's a message. Woo, that's a study all by itself. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you not know Even during the millennium, a thousand years where Jesus is reigning, do you not know there are still going to be some people that is saying no to Jesus? Yeah. Uh -huh. If Jesus is reigning as king on the earth, and there's still somebody don't know to say yes to him, all right, what you wasting time pointing the finger at the world today? Huh? Right. Now I'm in the book. Yeah. I don't stand up without going in the book because I have nothing to say. Get that. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, and so, that's why at the end of the 1,000 year reign of Jesus, called the millennial, Satan himself that was locked up in the bottomless pit for 1,000 years, the Bible says he's going to be loosed yeah. once again. Loose in the earth. And when he get loose in the earth, he gonna come and oh, he gonna mean get some people down right there. And guess what? It's gonna work for some folks. Oh, yeah. He's gonna take some more down with him. Yeah. Now when you think about that, come on somebody. Why are we wasting time pointing our finger at the world? Church, it's all about us. Yes. What are we doing in the land? What are we doing in the land? Glory to God. The church. Keep that in mind. Because we are the church. We are the, whoo, we're the world shakers. Amen. We're the world shakers. In the power of Jesus Christ. Huh? No one can step out in their own power because, honey, baby, it, it won't help. It, it won't go far. Without the power of God, 
You can even wake up in the morning and you can't even raise your hand to touch your nose, to chew a fly right. off your nose without the power of God. Somebody with me? Yes. Amen. It's all about the power Amen. of God. Hallelujah. And so verse 5 is saying here, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. That's how much God hates pride. That's how much God hates pride. He hates pride. Come off of it. Glory to God. Abomination. You know, that word abomination. Hallelujah. You see that word abomination? And when I read my Bible, it pops up time and time again. There are some other areas, hear me now. There are some other areas that God says these things are an abomination unto him. Yeah. I'm called to speak the whole truth, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. They got this gender thing going now. Mm -hmm. Look, don't waste your time trying to recreate the wheel. The only creator is God. Yes. And God created two genders, yes. male and female. Yes. Yes. Look, these people that's confused in that area, I tell them that God loves them. Yes. See, we want to point the finger. How are you going to ever get them saved, pointing the finger and condemning them? We know as the church, God calls it an abomination. Yes. Man with man and woman with woman. That's not what God did in the beginning. Yes. He created male and female. Yes. And he told them to reproduce. Yes. You multiply. Okay, no two males multiply and no two females can multiply. Yes. You can only do it God's way if you want Good results. Yes. Mentioning gender. Yeah, God called that homosexuality an abomination. I read it yes. in the book. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't bad enough, you got all of these genders. Adrian keeps me up on how many genders there are. Is there how many genders? 60 something? 86 genders. Now for real, y'all. For real. For real. And then you got a whole group of people that say, I'm genderless. I'm genderless. Well, you look like a female to me. You genderless. I heard somebody say a, a woman was pregnant with a child, and so she was calling the child an it. Well, I guess it's okay to say it if you don't know if it's male or female. But she was calling the child in her womb an it because she said that the child has a right, get this, oh God. after it's born, after it grows up, oh Jesus. the child has a right to decide what gender it is. Oh she said, and then maybe the child will decide it's